So what's in your clothing? I'm a board certified dermatologist with my research focused primarily on the interactions between skin and textiles. Understanding what's in your clothing is so essential these days because there are so many chemicals used to produce clothing and maintain clothing that sometimes we don't give them a lot of thought consciously. Most people only think about their clothing in terms of the fibers they're made from, whether it's cotton, polyester, silk, whatever it might be, but they rarely give much thought to what else is in their clothing. I do know that you think about your clothing when it comes to skincare only because every single patient that comes in with a rash, the first thing they always seem to say is I didn't change my laundry detergents or fabric softeners. So there is this general sense amongst people that there is some interaction between clothing and your skin, but most people seem to be just focused on that last step, the interaction between your clothing and detergents in your skin. The irony about all of this is I've been doing patch testing for contact dermatitis for over 20 years now, and I rarely have ever come across laundry detergents as the actual cause of my patient's rashes. So this really begs the question, if your clothing is responsible for some of your rashes, then what else is in your clothing? Have you noticed that when you buy new clothing, particularly if you purchase it online as opposed to from a store off the rack, that there can be this smell when you first buy your clothing. It may not even be just a regular smell, it can actually reek, have a really chemical-like smell. Some people have said the smell can be so pungent that they actually will feel like it irritates their eyes, they can feel like it affects their breathing. Sometimes they'll start coughing and even have asthma exacerbations. Now there are a lot of chemicals in clothing, especially when you first purchase it. However, one of the most common ones responsible for that odor is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is added to clothing by manufacturers for several reasons. It started about 100 years ago, but a lot of clothing manufacturers realized that when you add formaldehyde to clothing, you can make the clothing a bit more easy care, meaning wrinkle resistant. It can contribute to the color fastness of the garment so that colors are less likely to bleed. And from a clothing freshness perspective, in terms of avoiding mildews and molds from growing on your clothes, that is another reason why some manufacturers will add it to clothing. That way, when it goes from the manufacturer to your home, that it's less likely to have molds and mildews that build up on it, given the varying conditions it might arrive under. So you buy a new piece of clothing online, for example, and it comes in a box or a mailer. The actual clothing item will come inside of a plastic bag normally called a poly bag. The poly bag is a plastic bag itself that oftentimes is designed to protect your clothing while it's being transported. Poly bags can be made of varying materials. However, there are even recyclable materials and ones that are more environmentally friendly these days. So you rip open that poly bag, excited to see this new clothing item that you've purchased, pull it out, and the first thing you notice is the smell or this odor that comes from it. Now, technically, if you purchase that same exact clothing item from a store as opposed to online, the same formaldehyde that might have been in the clothing that you noticed so pungent when you first purchase it was probably still in the store version of it as well. The big difference between purchasing online versus purchasing at the store, however, is that while it's standing on the rack and open to air, that formaldehyde odor will have likely emanated away from the garment, so you're not gonna smell it as obviously. Some manufacturers will even add in lots of perfumes or other types of deodorizers just to block the smell or odor so it won't be as obvious. Now, even though those clothing items might have aired out a bit, it does not mean that that formaldehyde is actually gone. It may still be in the garment. So what happens next? You go ahead and wear the clothing item, excited to wear it. You don't wash it out first and your skin comes into contact with the chemical and you could be breathing it in. Sometimes the smell is obvious, sometimes it's not so obvious. Now the risk to your health from a skin perspective tends to be things like rashes from contact dermatitis. For other health concerns, you can have eye irritation or even exacerbations of coughing or asthma. Some people even complain about nausea with the smell of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is also considered a carcinogen. It has been linked to leukemia as well as some nasal and nasopharynx carcinomas. Now studies on clothing checking for formaldehyde concentrations have found formaldehyde in a wide array of clothing ranging from even infant and baby clothing to adult and maternity wear as well. It can be found in just about any type of garment ranging from shirts and t-shirts, pants, jeans, trousers, jackets. It can be in your underwear. 
It can even be in your socks. It can be in some of the other types of materials you might come into contact with, such as bags and purses and backpacks. So you always have to think about all of those sources of contact between the item and your skin that could be triggering some rashes. Interestingly, some studies have actually shown that the formaldehyde concentrations tend to be the lowest in synthetic materials as compared to cotton or cotton blends. Cotton tends to have higher concentrations of formaldehyde, likely to make it more easy care or wrinkle resistant because many types of cotton textiles will tend to wrinkle easily versus synthetics. Blended textiles tend to have the highest levels of formaldehyde in them. What that means is things like cotton and polyester blended together, cotton and elastic, types of combinations of different compositions of textiles. Sometimes when you look at that label on your shirt and you see that there's like four different types of fibers in them, that means it's a blended textile. So, so that means that formaldehyde might be a part of that manufacturing process of that textile to create it. A study looking at colors of textiles and the formaldehyde concentration interestingly found that those with one color might have higher concentrations of formaldehyde versus those that are printed. And actually even those that have one color versus multiple colors, somehow the ones that are monochromatic tend to have higher concentrations of formaldehyde too, based on the studies that I reviewed. Now, clothing doesn't come with ingredient labels as much as I'd love for them to do so. The only information you can get from looking at a clothing item to figure out what could have been in there is when you look at the label, you see the fiber content, you know, is there cotton, linen, silk, whatever is in there. You'll see where it was made and you'll also see companies just as a marketing proposition might disclose some claims. Things like easy care, wrinkle resistant. You really can't deduce how much formaldehyde might be in the clothing item based on those aspects. We can assume that if there are blended fibers, if there's cotton as the exclusive ingredient, and we can't even base it on organic cotton because it's not about where the fiber came from, it's about how it's manufactured into a textile. So don't get fooled into thinking that if it's organic, there's no formaldehyde in there. There actually may be, and we just don't know because because the word organic is only assigned to where the cotton crop came from, not what happened to it afterward. What can you do to try to avoid the irritation you can get from formaldehyde in your clothing? Formaldehyde may not just cause itchy rashes, pink bumps or papules, most commonly found on your arms, the backs of your legs, the direct sources of contact with the textile, your back for example, anywhere those textiles came into contact with your skin. How do you identify if formaldehyde is a possible source of your reaction in your skin? And this really boils down to understanding when patients come in and say to me, I have this rash and I didn't change my detergent, but then they're only talking about a rash, say around their neck or their shoulder. And I have to say to them, well, if it was your detergent, don't you think it would have been all over if that's where the clothing item was washed in? But again, they always say, well, no, it's in a limited distribution. This is where you really want to sit down and think what comes into contact with your skin in those areas to decide if it could be a possible trigger for your rashes. So for example, if you're only getting rashes where your underwear hits or where your sock hits, there is a chance that if you hadn't washed those socks or those underwear types of items before you wore them, that the formaldehyde concentration could have still been pretty significant to cause rashes in your skin. How do those rashes look? They can be itchy, they can have red papules or bumps. Sometimes they can even look bruise-like, which is always kind of interesting because formaldehyde has been linked to what we call purpuric contact dermatitis. So sometimes people will look at their skin and see what looks like bruise-like areas where that contact occurred. So it's important to kind of decipher almost detective-wise what came into contact with your skin prior to that rash developing. Now it is true, some people with formaldehyde allergies will not get reactions to their clothing, even if formaldehyde is in the clothing item, and that's simply because the concentration may not be high enough to elicit a rash when you come into contact with it. However, over repetitive use and different types of products that you come into contact with, you may see it at times. So what do you do? You wash your clothing before you wear it. That for most clothing items, this will work and you do not need to use hot water. A study looking at the difference between hot water and cold water and removing that formaldehyde content from clothing did not show a difference. 
It actually also reviewed whether or not ironing clothing could remove the formaldehyde from clothing and ironing alone doesn't work. This makes it a little more challenging for things like evening wear because if there is a formaldehyde concentration in say a ball gown or a cocktail dress that you're not inclined to wash the first time you wear it, there is a chance that there will be some formaldehyde still there and ironing won't work to get it out. But what about wash anxiety? Have you ever heard of this concept, wash anxiety? Wash anxiety is something that I had a particularly bad case of before I started to learn more about textile care best practices and how to really launder your clothing to maintain your clothing in its best state possible. So here's the deal. Wash anxiety is this fear that many people have out of a real genuine concern that if they wash their clothing, they will age it too quickly. And that's a real concern because if you don't wash it the right way, it is true, you can start to see the signs of wear and tear a little bit faster. The signs of aging your clothing could be manifested as shrinkage of the clothing, color fading, you might see pilling, and changes to the textural feel of the textile. There are ways to avoid this or reduce the chances of it. Consider using a laundry bag when you wash your clothing because if you place the clothing item in the bag and then into your washing machine, a bag that's designed to be used for your delicates in the washing machine, there'll be less likelihood of that garment being tangled up with other garments. There'll be less chances of that garment being pulled or stretched in different directions that could impact the wear and tear on that textile. Now wash on the cold setting. This is not only good for the environment, it's good for your clothing and for increasing the chances to age your clothing too quickly. Remember that that study looking at the difference between hot water and cold water and removing formaldehyde from your clothing did not show a difference. So washing on cold is reasonable because again, it's really just meant to rinse out that residue. Now, it's also reasonable to consider using a fabric rinse to lift out some of that residue of the formaldehyde from the clothing. Fabric rinses are products that you put in the fabric softener drawer in the laundry machine, so they're released at a certain point in the cycle to drop the pH of the water in such a way that it can actually lift out some of those residues. And when you dry your clothing, consider drying on the delicate cycle or drying flat so that you reduce the chances that the heat from the dryer will impact the garment over time.